Hi, this is Marcus Curtis from Marcus Curtis Music. In the last video, I recorded eight live tracks using the X Live card. Now, in the video before that, I showed you how to install the X Live card. In this video, what I would like to do is show you how to take the audio we recorded from the X Live card and bring that into a DAW application. And for this example, we're going to use Cakewalk. Cakewalk is free, anybody can download it. I have another video that shows you how to download Cakewalk and, and get it working with the X Live card. I'll leave a link to that video in the video description as well. So let's get started. Let's get these tracks from the X Live card into our DAW application. Okay, so let's see what these files look like. We're going to go ahead and plug in our card here, our SD card, 32-bit. And then we're going to call up our Windows Explorer. And let's look at our card. Okay, so here's our X Live recording that we made earlier. And we have two projects here. So when we... Uh, click on the one that has eight tracks. We have uh, unusual view here. We have a uh, uh, session log, okay? And then we have this WAV file. So all eight tracks are actually combined into one WAV file. So it would be very hard to copy and paste this one WAV file into our DAW application. So the question remains, how do we uh, get the audio from our X Live card into our DAW application. Well, let's address that now. So as you can see, it really doesn't work when we take the card from the X32 and plug it into the computer. Every song is contained in one WAV file, be it 8 tracks or 32 tracks. However many tracks you record is combined into one WAV file that only the X32 will decipher. So there's no way to import the audio directly from your DAW application. The way around this is you must play the song back in the X32. And then while you're doing that, record it live into your DAW application. So let me show you how to do that. Okay, in order to do this, the first thing we must address is the card configuration. So we're going to hit set up real quick. I'm going to scroll over to where we see card. And what we're going to do now, we see we're right already at the 32 and 8 out. If you don't see that and you get over the card, you see this, just the up and down arrows here will take you to this section in here. And we're going to uh, configure the amount of channels in and the amount of channels out that we need. So we're only taking eight channels from the card into the uh, DAW application, into Cakewalk, okay? So this configuration would work fine for us. But if you recorded 16 channels live and you want to take all these 16 channels back into the uh, uh, DAW application at once, you're not going to be able to do that. You're going to have to move this up to where... This is this one right here. Scroll up to where it says 16 in, 16 out. Click on that. Now you can do 16 at once into the DAW application. You can also do 32 in, 32 out. If you've recorded 32 tracks live at one time and you want to record all of that into the DAW at one time, this is what your configuration is going to have to be. Okay, if you have it on this configuration, the eight out would still work. The eight tracks that we have would still work. But if you have any more than eight tracks, you're going to have to use uh, some of these other configurations here. I'm going to go back to where it says 32 and, and eight out because that's all I've used. And we're going to just keep this simple. Okay, now we're ready to take our audio into the DAW application. And to start, we're going to open up the Behringer app and it's going to open up and we're going to connect Mixer to PC. And once it establishes a connection, we're going to go ahead and make sure our app is blown up to the screen here. And uh, the same type of settings that are on the mixer, we can adjust from here. So if we go to setup and go to card configuration, this is where you can adjust your, your how many inputs and how many outputs you need to do whatever it is you're doing. Okay. And then in routing, okay, so what we want to do is we want to make sure that uh, the card input has the first outputs one through eight here and that will route the outputs of the card into the DAW and then we want to make sure in order to hear what we are recording we can choose any one of these and for this example we'll use channels one through eight and route those also 
to the card. Okay, so our routing is handled. And the next thing we want to do is call up our recorder. So we can do that here. And uh, here's our two projects. And we can click on either one of those to get them started. And we have uh, two markers right here. So we're going to go ahead and hit play. And you can see that our project is beginning to play back right here. You can see down here in the meters where it's beginning to register. And if we want to turn it up a little bit, we can hear our project. Let's go ahead and uh, close this out here. Turn up our eight faders a little bit so we can hear what we're recording. Now these faders have no bearing on the input themselves. The inputs go into the card, bypasses the mixer actually. It goes straight from the card into the DAW application. So there's no way to really adjust the uh, signal going in. So you have to make sure when you record it that the signal is set properly. Okay, so um, see, here's our main bus. Let's see if we can hear her. There we go. Okay, there's our song. We'll just go ahead and set all these to. Okay. Notice that the solos don't even work. Okay, good. Let's go ahead and turn this off now. And now the next thing to do is to go ahead and uh, we'll go ahead and turn the volume down on the main so we don't have to listen to it through the speakers. And we're going to go ahead and minimize this and open up Cakewalk. So now that Cakewalk opens up, we're going to go ahead and click on New Project. We're going to load a new project, just a basic project. We're going to close the inspector by hitting I, and we're going to close the browser by hitting B on the keyboard. We're going to go over here where our tracks are, hit the plus to add tracks, and we're going to count up to eight. Eight is all we need. We're just going to do eight at once, and then hit Create. And there's our tracks. Now to... Um, Size these up, just hit F on the keyboard, and they will fit all eight tracks to the screen. But as you can see, uh, we don't have access to our inputs. It's there, but it's just the tracks aren't wide enough. So we're going to go down here, and we're going to open up maybe a little bit further. Now we can see our inputs and our outputs. Everything is routed out to the master, and we can see two tracks out to the master and we can see here's our inputs right here okay so we're going to click on that go down to the x live card and we're going to go ahead and hit left this will be channel one and then we'll go down here to this input and go to right that'll be uh channel two okay and then if we click on track three and go over to our input Okay, stereo is the next one up here for channel one and channel two. We're gonna go back uh, over to left, uh, drive in three. Okay, so now we're hitting track three. Uh, track four, we're gonna go ahead and click that and route that to right. Okay, and audio, as you probably already know, all the, all the even numbers are typically right, all the odd numbers are typically left. So we're gonna go down to, um, the fifth one and route that into five and then we're going to go five right for six okay so for seven we're going to go seven uh left and for eight we're going to go seven right so now all of our tracks are routed the way they need to be. Okay, so now when we hit uh, record on all of these, and we're going to do that, I go over here and hit the record button, and it'll arm all of the tracks at once. Okay, and now what we'll do is we'll shrink this up by hitting F again on the keyboard, and now they're all uh, set up. Okay, so we're going to go back to our app now. Let's go ahead and play our audio, which is right here. Okay, if it doesn't play, was it? There it goes. Open that up. 
and our audio is now playing back okay so if we go to this and we can raise up our master fader we can hear the audio we're recording okay now okay we're set to go here so it's a matter of let's go over here and we're going to stop the playback we're going to go over to cakewalk again and we're going to start recording but make sure that we turn the metronome off by hitting that button right there now the metronome is off let's start recording and let's go to our uh, behringer app and we're going to hit play Okay, so we can turn the volume down as we record this. There's no way to adjust the volume. It's a direct feed from the card into the DAW application. You can't even use the DAW application to adjust the volume. Uh, if you want to adjust the volume, you'd have to use some kind of a separate type of a mixer or audio interface or something of that nature. Uh, and as you can see, if you don't have the right volume set, you might get some peaks here. And uh, these are just in the first fills of the audio um, but for the most part you know it's it's not really in the red um, so we're recording our entire song uh, from the Behringer X32 into the uh, DAW application Okay, so as you can see, we have our uh, song recorded in our DAW right here. So um, we can uh, play it back to see how we like the way it turned out. It looks like it came out pretty good. Okay. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and keep that and what we're going to do is take all the recording buttons and turn them off now notice that the song does not start until measure six and to fix this all we're going to do is go over here to channel one click on it twice and it highlights all of these channels here and we're just going to go over here and crop all of these at once all the way over till we get to sixth measure right here next we're gonna take our cursor up till it changes to this cross hold down our mouse button and move it over till we get to the beginning of the first measure so now our song is going to start on the first measure somewhere in the middle of the first measure Okay, so if we want to see what that looks like in our mixing uh, view, we just go over here to where it says Views and go down to where it says Console View, and the Console View opens up. And now, if, as you may know, you can get rid of the Console View by hitting D on the keyboard and calling D back up, and we can adjust it like so. So now here's our Console View, so we can view what we've uh, recorded in a mixing board fashion. And everything is separate, as you know.
go in and mix and make adjustments as we see fit. Now, peeking out our output here of our main bus. Pull it down just a little bit. A little bit more. So as you may know, the X32 can be configured to control a DAW remotely. Now this works with Cakewalk, but it also works with uh, Cubase, it'll work with Reaper, those are the two that I've tested it on. It, uh, I guess it'll work with Pro Tools, I've seen some videos that show you how to set it up with Pro Tools, but it works with Cakewalk as well, and all you have to do is press DAW Remote, go down to the matrix C, right there, and here's our play and our pause. And here's, right now it's playing back, as you can see. Over here, you'll notice, we only have two channels playing back because it's taken the audio from the DAW uh, into the mixer. And we only have two out that everything is running through in the DAW. Now, if we want to, in our routing, we can go hit routing, and we can route away from the card, okay? And then we can go over here to auxiliary in, and we can, since we're only using two channels, go down to card one and two, hit that, go down to the auxiliary and down here, and you see here's our playback, and we can go ahead and raise that up. Now if we want this in stereo, we're going to go ahead and hit the select button, and then we're going to go over to home, I'm going to hit the first button right here, first uh, encoder actually go over here then press this arrow here and now we've just made the stereo it's left and right so there's our playback okay so I made another video that shows you how to set up the X32 as a DAW remote it can be a little bit tricky and a little bit complicated so this video will walk you through step by step how to set it up with cakewalk and similar things that apply when you're using Reaper or if you're using Cubase or one of those other uh, DAW applications. Uh, I'll leave a link in the video description for that video. Okay, so in a final analysis of the X32, really it all depends on your situation. If you already have a laptop and you have your DAW on that laptop, just bring your laptop. Um, you won't have to transfer the audio once you record it, number one. It'll be a little bit easier. If uh, you don't have a laptop but you have a desktop for recording and you're looking for a way to record somebody live, an X32 live card only costs a couple hundred dollars. You can go out, get one, stick it in the back of your X32, go live, record somebody professionally, bring it back, and dump the audio into your DAW, and you have a professional recording. That could be a way to go too. Um, it all depends on your situation and what really suits your needs, really. It's a great product. If, if you don't want to bring a bunch of stuff with you, you're going to uh, go record somebody live and you don't want to bring a ton of stuff and you already have a bunch of gear you're taking, sometimes the less gear you have to worry about, the better off it is and the easier your session is going to go. So, you know, decide whether this thing works for you or not. There, there is... You, now you know how to install it, now you know how to record with it and all the features, and now you know how to take it from the card into your DAW so you, that you can uh, edit and finish the product. So that's going to be it for this video. In the next video, we're going to cover routing. We're going to simplify it. And this is basically for people starting out who don't know uh, what routing is. We're going to approach it from a uh, recording aspect, but we're going to re uh, explain everything about routing in, in a lot more detail. So if you like the content of this video, go ahead and hit that like button. And if you find information useful, hit the like button. That helps me out. Um, if you want to see the next videos coming up, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. And if you have any questions or anything that you need addressed on the X32 or any of the other gear that I use, go ahead and leave a um, comment in, in the comment area and I will try to address your situation and if we're having problems and you can't get it working I'm, I'll make a video to show you what to do okay so thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video